Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to be opening and opening up two packets of the new Planeswalker decks for War of the Spark. So I normally like to try and pick up a couple of these um, when each set comes out just because you know it's quite a nice way to play casually with your friends and things like that. So let's get into this. I think we'll start with Gideon first. Let's just have a little read on the back. Gideon Jura is a stall hero who never hesitates to throw himself between his allies and danger. Rally a massive army, then lead them into battle and vanquish your opponent in a single overwhelming attack. So, I'm getting the impression, I've not looked at the deck list for these, but I'm getting the impression that this is going to be kind of like a bit of a, kind of a white tribal kind of deck. So, let's get into it and have a look. So you also get two boosters as well for War of the Spark. Um, so we'll have a look at those as well. Okay, so, so we have in this packet, which is always a pain to get the card out without damaging it, we have the Planeswalker. Now, the Planeswalker for these decks is not usually that powerful, to be honest. Um, wow, it feels a bit flimsy, actually. Um, so Gideon, the Oath Sworn. So the passive ability is whenever you attack with two or more non-Gideon creatures, put a one plus one counter on each of these creatures. So you can plus two it until the end of turn. Gideon, the Oath Sworn, becomes a five-five white soldier creature that's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. Okay, so that's quite powerful. And then you can ultimate minus nine. XL Gideon, the Oath Sworn, and each creature opponent controls. Okay, now the problem I've got with this card is the fact that it's six mana. And if you're going to ultim ultimate, even in an ideal world, that's what, turn 11 that you're going to be able to ultimate? So, I mean, I guess if, you know, a kind of casual game gets to that point and you've got lots and lots of kind of small creatures out, then maybe it's, maybe it's something that will, that will work. But obviously these Planeswalkers never seem to see, tend to see kind of... Uh, standard you know serious standard play but anyway let's have a look at the rest of the deck so it comes in a oh, pretty smart deck box i mean obviously it's not very uh not very strong but it's uh something to keep it in okay so there's our two booster packs let's get those out and probably a beginner's guide to playing Yeah, lovely. There we go. Get rid of that for now. And here is the deck. So let's try and get this open. Oh, there is a little thing. It never seemed to work. Oh, there we go. No, it did. That's the first. All right. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so let's go through these cards and see what we've got. So, Command the Dread Horde is our rare. So there's actually a white-black deck then. So choose any number of target creatures and a Planeswalker cards in graveyards. Command the Dreadhorde deals damage equal to the total converted mana cost of these cards. Put them onto the battlefield under your control. Okay, yeah, so it does seem to be going in that tribal. So we've got an Oath of Kaya as another rare. So Gideon's Battle Cry. So we've got a few of those, two of those. Ah, right. Now, this was the other thing I was wondering. Is given the new amount of Planeswalkers in the new set, I did wonder if there would be any of the other kind of the uncommon Planeswalkers in these decks. But obviously there is. So that's pretty cool. So Johnny's Pride, mate. A few of those. Charm Stray. Okay, so we've got a play set of those. Enforcer Griffin. All right, so it's kind of um, kind of small creatures, flyers. I guess your typical white deck, really, with a bit of black in there. It does seem to be more white than black. So trust this Ped Pegasus again. Lots of flyers. So the flying theme. Oh, here's more black. Oh, that's a good card. Cruel Celebrant. Whenever a cruel celebrant or another creature or planeswalker control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So I imagine that could be quite powerful in this deck. 
Excellent. Gideon's Company. A few of those. And then we're into the lands. We've got an Auras of Guildgate. Play set of those. Obviously going to be useful casting your black and white, black and white sources. And then we are into just I'm guessing our normal lands. Basic lands. Oh no, here we go. There's a few more. Okay, so Ob Nixilis Cruelty. Quite a good piece of removal, that, actually, depending on who you're playing. Excellent, so three of those. Now, is this a sideboard? They used to always put a sideboard in with these decks. One, two, three, five, six, seven. No, it's not a sideboard, it's some tokens. I remember in the old kind of starter decks, they used to actually give you a 15-card sideboard that you could kind of obviously put in with your, with your pieces. Um, okay, so... Got a few of those. Uh, Obnixilis's cruelty again, good piece of removal. And we've got a bit of a bit of a combat trick. Get plus two, plus two. Applying to the end of turn, gain two life. Four of those. Okay, so it's kind of quite a you know it's not going to be a hugely competitive deck. You know, I'm not sure I'd want to take this to Friday Night Magic or not and play it. I mean, if you're you know if you are a beginner, I think these decks are quite good just for kind of learning the game maybe playing with your playing with your friends and things like that but I think if you went to Friday Night Magic I'm not sure how successful you would be um, but at least you know it is a standard deck that you can that you can play with okay so let's get some of this out of the way I think we'll open the boosters at the very end okay so let's put that there so let's get into the Jace Planeswalker deck now this I must say is much more up my street being a blue, being a blue deck, I'm guessing it's, oh, it does say, silly me. Okay, there we go, so blue and green, right, interesting. Okay, so again, we've got our Jace Planeswalker. We've got our Jace Planeswalker there. So we have Jace Arcane Strategist. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a one plus one counter on target creature you can draw control. So that's the passive. And then you can actually plus one this to draw a card. That seems pretty good. But again, to me, it's just the casting cost of these of these planeswalkers. You know, four and you know, four and two blue, six six mana to get it out. You know, seems I don't know, it seems quite heavily costed to me, but, you know, if you can get it out, you can draw a card each turn, okay? And then, I guess, if you've got, if you're playing kind of a control deck, which I'm kind of guessing this is, your creature's control can't be blocked this turn, so you can ultimate it if you need to kind of finish out the, finish out the game. Okay, let's have a look at the deck. So, once again, we've got two boosters. Oh, we do have another... Another plain uh, kind of guide. Is this different? Oh, it is different, yeah. So again, it's a little bit more about this about this deck. The other one, the other one was specific to that deck. So this isn't just a generic kind of insert they put in about how to play the game. So that's quite useful. Yeah, like it. Okay, let's see if the. Uh, if it opens this one. Yeah. Oh, kind of. Oop. Okay then, so we have Spark Double. So we have Spark Double enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature or planeswalker you control. Okay, so we've got some kind of slightly larger creatures. Okay, we've got Jace's Ruse, a few copies of that. It's a bit of a bounce spell. Okay, so again, we've got another another of the uncommon Planeswalkers. We've got Kiora. So whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under control, draw a card. Okay, Kiora's Dreambreaker. All right, so there's actually some quite large creatures, so it's not 
really a control deck that I was expecting. Got some proliferate going on with a Bloom Hulk, Pollen Bright Druid. Three of those. Okay, so we've got some, okay, some big kind of vanilla, or at least one big vanilla creature, which this could be your kind of finisher. Seven, six. We've got Ward Scale Crocodile. All these creatures seem quite high casting cost, I must say. I'm interested in what the kind of ramp on this deck is. Um, so we've got some Flyers, Merfolk Skydiver. Guild Pact Informant. Jace's Projection. All right, it's not quite what I was expecting this deck, I must say. I thought it was going to be much more of a controly kind of deck. But anyway, we've got Simic Guild Gates. Help us get those creatures out. So we've got Basic Lands. And then, okay, so we've got a bit of card draw. Obviously, it'll be useful with that Jace Planeswalker out as well. We get lots of cards. Um, okay, and we've got Stealth Mission. Put two one plus one counters on target creature you control. It can't be blocked. Again, useful for kind of seeing out a game. Okay, so band together. Courage in Crisis. New Horizons. And then some of the... Oh, there is a, there is a token there. First come, first serve. Anybody wants that? Hopefully you can read that. Okay, let's I'll grab the other one. I won't be using it. There we go. Hopefully that focuses. Whoever grabs that is more than welcome to the code. Okay, let's put these decks out of the way. And let's have a look at the what we get in our boosters. Now, I must say, getting the uh, getting the starter decks over the years, I've had some really good pulls out of the boosters that come in come in these. Um, I did get a uh, an expedition back in Zendikar. So first booster, let's see what we get. So obviously, if you're getting getting this as your kind of first deck, this is a good way. To obviously be able to supplement the cards that are in there, maybe change some cards out, put some different ones, different ones in. So, Relentless Advance, Loxodon Sergeant, Samut Spirit, Arboreal Gazer, Avon Eternal, Spark Reaper, Arlen's Wolf, uh, Heartfire, Enforcer Griffin, Kazmina's Transmutation, uh, onto the Uncommons, Firemind Vessel, Mayhem Devil. We have a Dovin, Hand of Control, quite like that card, I must say. And let's see what we get. Ravnica at War. Okay, so quite a good removal piece if you want to get rid of some of those multicolored creatures. Island and a zombie. Next booster. Okay. We have No Escape, Makeshift Battalion, Wardstale Crocodile, Toll of the Invasion, Band Together, Jay is Greeting, Jay is Greeting, Rising Populous, Thunder Drake, Dustmantle Operative, and then our Uncommons, Challenger Troll, Evolution Sage, oh, Obnix, The Hate Twisted. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Obnix list the hate twisted deals one damage to that player. Destroy target creature, its controller draws two card. And planar wide celebration. So you can choose the same mode more choose four. You can choose to change the same mode more than once, but it is seven mana. Okay, swamp do we have a oh yes! Boom! That's what we're talking about. Wow, foil buntu. Fantastic. Okay, I'd be interested to know what that's worth, actually. So, God Eternal Menace. When God Eternal Buntu enters battlefield, sacrifice any number of car of other permanents and draw that many cards. When God Eternal Buntu dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library third from the top. These God cards are really good. Really good. Um, see, I told you, these packs in these packs in these decks are fabulous. 
Right. Next one. Okay. Uh, Tithe Bearer Giant, Cronch Wrangler, Burning Prophet, Totally Lost, Arlen's Wolf, Grim Initiate, Battlefield Promotion, Stealth Mission, Vampire Opportunist, Rescuer Sphinx is our first uncommon. Chandra's Triumph. Whatley, each creature, each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Uh, you are kidding me. What'd I say? God Eternal Ronus. Great card. Okay, Death Touch. When God Eternal Ronus enters a battlefield, double the power of each other creature you control until the end of turn. These creatures gain vigilance until the end of turn. When God Eternal Ronus dies, or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library, third from the top. What did I tell you? Every time you open boosters out of these, these decks... Oh, and we've got foil as well. Lovely. Okay. What, would you, what were the odds of that? Two mythics, two gods. Phenomenal. Okay, last one. I think... Let's see if our luck continues. Okay, so we have Return to Nature, Tefiri's Time Twist, Ironclad Crovod, Invading Manticore, Band Together, Goblin Assault Team, Bulwark Giant, Spellkeeper Weird, Obnixilis Cruelty, Centaur Nurturer, and Dispark, first uncommon, good removal piece. Dread Malkin, another Obnix, and Dreadhorde Invasion. Again, still a good card. Swamp and a Zombie Army. So there you go. That is what you can expect to find inside the um, the new Planeswalker decks for War of the Spark. I still say that I don't know if they're maybe slightly um, kind of pulled just a little bit more spicy, but. You know, the pools in the, in the uh, what do they call it, seeded. I don't know if they're kind of slightly seeded better um, in terms of the booster packs in this in these decks, but I've always had good pools out of the, um, out of the boosters that come with it. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and do all that good stuff, and I will see you next time.